Well, before we get started, I want to show you my favorite climbing rose, which has just started to bloom. It's called Zephyrine Drohean. It is a thornless climber that doesn't need full sun. It is fragrant mm, and a rebloomer. I've lost it once in 20 years during the polar vortex, but that was a tough winter and it came back looking good. All right, time to get to work. Well, with spring temperatures heading to summer temperatures, we're already dealing with weeds. And I want to talk about invasive weeds like this bindweed, Japanese knotweed, and Canadian thistle. These are three types of weeds that we don't pull. If you start getting in there and pulling, they have these white fleshy roots, you're going to make more. And so all we do with these to combat them, and I've been combating this one for 20 years, is cut them off at the bottom and it's called continual top cutting. And so whenever we see one, we go all the way down to the base and just snip it off. And what happens is you'll eventually exhaust the plant. The joke is either you'll exhaust the plant or it'll exhaust you. In this case, I've got a little bit of bindweed in here and, and bindweed looks kind of like a morning glory, a, a white morning glory when it blooms. And so I've got a little bit left in here, but you're always gonna have some, but it's not the crazy complete bed filled with it. And so all I'm gonna do is go down to the bottom of the plant, follow this little vine back and snip it off. And I'm gonna go through the bed and there's a few other ones in there too. All right, where are you here? Okay. Right here. All right. All right, I'm gonna look around and see where else we've got some bindweed. Behind you is another terrible weed that we need to talk about that was actually brought into the garden as a regular plant. I love these little dram color point pruners. One thing is the color. I can find them when I leave them out here. And the other thing is that locking mechanism stays closed when it's supposed to close and open when it's open. And you can see the vine is up here, but the actual starting point is all the way down here. And that's what we need to do is get all the way to the bottom, cut that off. This will just kind of dry out and I'll pull it off later. Now this guy here, oh, this is my favorite Japanese maple. It's been in for about three, four years, and the winter did it in. It is definitely sad, but that's gardening. We're going to take this out and decide what we should put here. And I think it, for me, it might be another Japanese maple. All right, let's go look at that other invasive plant. This variegated bamboo is the bane of my existence. I deal with it the same way that I deal with those other invasive weeds, only not as successfully. Uh, I started with just one little start, this big, and the guy who gave it to me said, oh, it's clumping, it doesn't spread. Well, as you can see, it's, it's everywhere into my beds. In some cases with a plant like this, you have to turn your head around it and say, well, okay, it's beautiful. I'll never get rid of it. It's part of the landscape but we are trying to control it by getting in there and cutting at the base. For this plant, it's two or three times a year. All right, more problems in the garden. Follow me to the vegetable garden. Come on, bud. Well, it was inevitable. Our first signs of rabbit damage were all fenced in, but they always figure a way in or out. And until I can find where they're coming in or out, I use this hot pepper wax. I make it in Greenville. And the cool thing about it is you can spray it on the plant but it's fine for us. We, we don't, you're not gonna get hot pepper when you harvest this. These are actually dandelion greens and that's one of the favorite things that rabbits love. You see, they've got into the dandelion greens but they have not touched the lettuce yet. And we finally have a good job. Our last job of the day is to do a little harvesting already. We're early in the season but we've got some stuff that overwintered and we wanna talk about the right time to pick them and I can't wait to have a salad later on with fresh stuff out of the garden. One of the reasons we garden is we want the freshest and best produce. And one of the reasons we start earlier <laughs> is so that we can harvest at this time of the year. And we want to do this first thing in the morning when the plants are all filled with water. We don't want to do this at three o'clock in the afternoon and it's about 930 in the morning. These plants here will come back a couple more times, and give us more lettuce. Now I've got other greens and some mustard greens that went it over in the cold frame that I'm going to harvest and that's going to be our salad tonight and that is a good feeling. All right, let's finish up. 
Well, I'll tell you what, it's great to be harvesting out of the garden. And these are superhero spry marigolds that I started from seed. It's always exciting to see something that you started from seed and see it start to bloom. But I do see some slug damage already. So I'm going to have to get some sluggo, which is an organic slug bait, and get it on here because I do not want to lose my foliage. Now be sure to check me out online, lots of other garden stories and videos and all sorts of great garden stuff there. And that's where you can be part of my Seed of the Month Club too until next week. I guess I'll go in and make a salad if this stuff even gets inside. Mm, there it is fresh. We'll see you then. Mm.